March 1974, that's about the time we left Cleveland, and yes, it looks like a beautiful day in Cleveland to me. Hi, I'm George the Antique Nomad. Come with me as I wander the country in search of valuable vintage, amazing antiques, and cool collectibles. We'll buy, sell, and trade at antique malls, shops, and shows, estate sales, flea markets, thrift stores, anywhere people go to find really interesting things that just aren't made anymore. So come on, let's go. Hey everybody, it's George the Antique Nomad, and I am back in Clarksville, Tennessee. I haven't been shopping or filming here for over a year. One place that we like has moved, so we're going to hit them later, but we are at a place I've never seen before, and this is Out of the Past Antiques and Collectibles. It's on a sort of obscure side street, but it looks like it has genuinely old things, unlike Miss Lucille's, which is a place, well, we might show you that later if you like brand new things painted up and pretending to be old, then that's your place. But this place looks like it has really old stuff, so let's come on in and take a look. Oh, there's another one of those well water drawers that I'm fascinated with. Well, right off the bat, I really like this hall tree. It's 465, but it's got a swivel mirror. This is going to be right about 1900, so it's sort of an empire style, and it's got a nice marble top. And it's a pretty big deluxe one. It's got the original trays, too. That's nice to see. So, cool to see something interesting in terms of nice furniture right away coming in. And let's see what else they have here. I've never been here before, so it's all going to be new to me, which is fun. A bunch of little children's toys and games. Looks like 1930s through 60s vintage. And, oh, a old Kentucky home scale made in Louisville. 30 bucks. That's not a bad price on that. It's interesting. The concept of old Kentucky home is a lot older than you think, because this is old. <laughs> Opera glasses. Hmm, I wonder what this was for. Oh, it's to... Is it a radio? Yes, this is one of those early 80s Pepsi radios. $3, but it's not working. These are kind of neat. These were from the 1939 World's Fair, and they were done as liquor bottles. And this one's got its original top, which is usually missing, and then it's been turned into a laundry sprinkler. Let's see, tribute to JFK. Oh, here we go. A whole bunch of um, traveling medicine doctor's kit from Kansas, 1920s and 30s. I'm guessing those things are expired. Or if you took them, you would be. Ah, as is. That's too bad. That's a pretty little piece with the opalescent and the cranberry. I have to say the prices are very reasonable here so far. This looks like it's Compare from France. $21. It would have had a lid, though, on that one. Old paperweight of the Hermitage, where Andrew Jackson lived in Nashville. I've had this one before. I keep thinking that uh, the Hermitage stuff is going to sell better around here, but it seems like maybe people are less interested in that these days. Mm -hmm. Hey, girl. Yes. That. Oh no, I didn't miss it. I like it, but it's uh, it says it's as is, so I'm going to take her at her word. Let's see what else we have here. Ten dollars firm. This is lucite. That's kind of neat. Lucite or acrylic, but I'm betting the clock might be in less than sterling condition. Yeah, that's too bad. But that's a cute case if you could find a clock to put in it. Panama pad garter for those sexy legs under your suit. <laughs> I guess that was before they had nylon in stockings to hold them up. These are cute little shaving sets, and these would have been something that would have been considered somewhat portable. This would flip down and you could carry it with you, but it's got the cup in there and then a mirror, so when you were on the road. Back in the 1920s and 30s, that would be something you would take with you. Ooh, another portable room cooler, and this one's got a great shape. Lasco, it's a hundred bucks. These old fans like this, anytime they're a good color and shape, that seems to be what they go for nowadays. Let's see what else we've got here. This looks English to me. 
but it's actually German. It says foreign on the bottom, but it is Feuerfest, which is something to do with fire. This one's a leptin tumble up here. Now, this is one thing I find very curious about these. So they're doing the tumble ups with the decoration on them so that they'll look pretty by the bedside, but then they put the leptin name on the bottom where that's what you see. It seems a little bit odd. It took them a while to figure out Western taste and designs after the Second World War. There's a lot of things that are kind of unintentionally funny like that. Decorative metal urn. Well, this looks like it's 20th century, but it's not new by any means. It's actually very fancy. You've got the winged satyr up there, and you've got some cherubs on the sides. This looks like it's a little bit dented there, otherwise I might take that for $16. But I have a feeling we're going to find something here, because she does have good stuff, and the prices seem like they're reasonable. This little guy here. Briar pipe in the caddy. This is why he has no tail. That's a nice little clock shelf in the corner with the tile laid in it, priced at $65. That's, that's about full price on it, but that's going to be sometime around $18.90, and the tile makes it a little more special. This looks older than it is. This is actually occupied Japan, made to look like things from the turn of the last century. It's a match holder, and you would strike the match on the sides in the rough part, but that's just to show you that not all of those old pieces really are as old as they look. So it pays to do a little bit of searching. Now here's an early Gillette electric razor. This could be a sleeper. I'm surprised how much some of the safety razors are selling for now. And this is one of the very first of the electrics. You can tell by the shape it's very art deco. It's got this cord. So that's something I think I'm going to look up because if it's in working order, let's, let's see if it could be, oh, no, it's fraying right there, so it's not going to work. Darn. In working condition, I have a feeling that this is maybe an $85 or $100 piece because a lot of this shaving stuff is really shot up lately from this era. And it was nice that it had the case and everything. It's too bad about that cord. Uh, yeah, I think it looked better on the mannequin. <laughs> but it's a nice floppy velvet hat, and it is $14 from... Oh, that's offshore. New, no, not an old one. These look like they're a little bit older. Nope, that one's not either, huh? So they're starting to redo the old hats, too. That's a good thing to know. Old corn cob pipe, and that's a big corn cob for $7. I think that might be the first thing I take. I always sell these old things. A lot of people end up buying them as theater props, it seems like. I don't know why it is, but it seems like any community theater that's doing something set in the past ends up needing a corn cob pipe. So here we go. She is quite caught up in that hat and bonnet. This actually looks like it's a Japanese piece. Iris and herringbone with the carnival is something from the 1950s when they started applying carnival to depression glass. But this is a very, very popular pattern here in Tennessee because the uh, iris is the state flower. I remember back in Washington State, we had a tour group came uh, to one of our antique malls, and there were about 10 women from Tennessee on it, and we sold every piece of that that we had in the it's mall. It's the passion flower now. It's the passion flower now. Well, that's certainly taking over everything, isn't it? Ooh, old vintage drive-in speakers. These are all coming out of drive-ins because they're using low wattage radio frequency now instead of the things that you would hang in your car. So the things you would hang in your car are a nostalgia item now. I was being serious. The passion flower? Yeah. Is the state... state flower. Seriously? Yep. As of when? I don't know, but it is. Huh. Let's see, well, a little swing mirror. This goes with all that holiday Regency stuff, and it's a magnifier on one side, which is a little scary. Ooh, boy, mm, got to fix up here. I kind of like that for $15. A souvenir of Halley's Comet. So this is from the 1980s. That would have been basically a kaleidoscope. Let's see what else is interesting here. This is kind of neat. $19.50, that me, makes me think it might be a newer one, but it is a, in that case, a reproduction of an old ship on nest, basically, like a hen on nest candy dish. 
and then the paperweight for school supplies blue horse is not bad at 23. i'm curious to see this i mean i think it's got to be newer because of the price but maybe they just don't really care that much and i'll get a great deal so i'm going to go ask if i can get help with that old elks pin bpoe whiting and davis glasses case a blue box doll from Hong Kong. That's a very inexpensive doll from back in the 40s and 50s that were sold. And then this is a collapsible Girl Scout cup. That might actually be worth buying for $5. Collapsible drinking cups seem to be interesting to people now. And there is an old style typewriter ribbon. A couple of old wardrobes. This one's on wheels. Ooh, look at this, Russellville. 40 over 8 is an organization of veterans from the U.S. Armed Forces. The Society of 40 Men and 8 Horses originated around 1920 after World War I, and this is one of their uniforms. It's a fraternal organization. This is only priced at 25. That's actually kind of interesting. Russellville is a very, very small town in Kentucky, though, so I don't know that there'd be a lot of call for that. This is very cute. This is a child's coat, and this is Victorian. This is going to date back to the 1890s. It's priced at 35, which is a perfectly good price for it. It's in reasonably good condition. It's crushed velvet, sort of a green-gray color. Bango's Pest Control. I like these big paper clips. This one's advertising probably 1970s is when you usually see those. Serving Nashville since 1957. Pest control because you go bam when you see the thing run out of, from under your desk. All right, let's take a look at this very strange vase with the fish base. I think this is going to be Gonder pottery and Gonder worked for, yep, there it is, the Gonder mark. He worked for Shawnee. Lawton Gonder was his name and then he broke off on his own and he's known for these very big sort of heavy ceramics with very thick glazes that tend to variegate like this where you see a little bit of the pink hue coming through the blue and then there's a contrast in here. It's an interesting piece. I see a hairline crack in it though so I'm not going to take it with me. This is a rather old picture for only $15 with the great pattern, and it's nice that it's painted out. That actually makes a difference on the earlier stoneware. But I do see a hairline crack in the back, so darn, I'm just having a hard time with condition today. Let's see what these house art trays are about. Silver Anniversary, the Pittsburgh Conference in Analytical Chemistry at the Cleveland Convention Center, March 1974, that's about the time we left Cleveland, and yes, it looks like a beautiful day in Cleveland to me. I can see why that's only $350. <laughs> and then we've got the Country Club of Rochester, New York, founded 1895. But I see the one that I think I want to buy. It's underneath on the bottom of all of these. To me, this one's the most interesting because after he was president, Jerry Ford liked to golf and he was a little clumsy with the golfing because of his old football injury but he liked to have a big event up in Vail every year and this one is from that time this is going to be late 70s and for seven dollars somebody who's a political collector will think this is interesting so I'm going to take that one that's actually quite a saddle there and you can see it's Kentucky whip and collar of Princeton Kentucky stamped on top and that is priced at $85 now. That's actually an interesting local interest piece for, whoops, for where I am, but I don't think this piece comes with it. This is a different saddle. This is a donkey saddle rack that's older for $150, but that's actually pretty tempting. I'm going to bear that in mind. I've already got a saddle in stock, but that would be good for where I live. And then we've got these old wooden dryers. I always like these. I like the ones that mount like this. You put the sticks up and then you put the linens out to dry and then you just can put it back into one telescoping thing that's easy to store. $60 is about right for that. Nice mirror hiding behind for $75. Oh, I like that flower power little beverage set in the case there. Inner $18 and you know with all the shot glasses that's probably a reasonable price because I don't see that flowery one very often. Well, once you see one thing in a space that seems interesting and inexpensive, then it makes you want to look at everything else, or at least that's the way my brain works. 
lots of stuff that's cute and collectible, but just sort of a few dollars here and there kind of things. Which, that sort of stuff is always in heavy supply for me. I'm really looking for things that are a little more specific, a little more unusual, or specific to the next show I'm doing, which is the Mount Dora show in Florida. This is cute. I like these old displays, old counter displays, and usually there's shelves in the back so I can use them at shows, but it is 145, so I'm going to leave it here, but it tells you how to select your proper rouge face powder, cake makeup, or lipstick using that chart there. Lots and lots of dishware. It's nice that this set has the uh, carrier. It's $45, which is about what I would expect for a nice set with the carrier these days. Those glasses are 1980s, though, and that carrier is earlier. Part of the way you know that is look at the thickness of the glass at the bottom. They didn't do thick glass on the bottom like that until around 1980. The French compact in this sewn case is nice. And this enameled cigarette case for $28.50 might be interesting. I'm sure that's India from the 1950s. But as people are starting to collect brass, I'm finding the painted pieces catch people's eye. I seem to always find bookends when I'm in Clarksville. This cast iron elephant pair is $35. They've got the symbol of the company that made them there. That's 1920s. Just a tad more than I want to spend though. Hey everyone, I just wanted to take a quick break and thank you for watching this video. If you're enjoying it, please give it a thumbs up and leave a comment. Also, please do subscribe because then you can click that bell to be notified of future videos. We have membership packages. There's a couple of different levels. We appreciate the support of our super fans who help us do extra bonus content. You can check that out by hitting the join button below or clicking the link in the description. And lastly, we want to ask you to check out our new channel, The Antique Nomad Live, that's live with an exclamation point, where we're doing additional content of a live nature, haul sales, bonus stuff. We'll have a lot of fun there too. So check us out here on The Antique Nomad and also on The Antique Nomad Live. Now let's get back to this video. Let's see what this looks like. Well, nice dresser box, not much to it. The mirror underneath is nice, but it's as is. These are cute as Alice Go. These are Goebel, the company that made Hummels, and they're marked Goebel West Germany. These are actually 1980s in that red and white, so a little more stark, kind of right at the end of the owl craze of the 70s. These would have been made. It's 45 for the set because it's got the two lar the large pitcher, the cream pitcher, and then a couple of mugs, kind of an odd number there. This is a pretty piece here. This is a company called Corday, and Corday did very fine porcelain, all hand painted. It's typically these pastels that was done largely in the 1940s and early 50s. Uh, they can't tell that it's Corday because it would have been marked under the base of the figure, which has been applied to this lamp. And it's marked way down to 80 because the market for these have come down. But this one seems to have all of her f flowers and everything, and her hands are intact. So it's a pretty good deal for what it is, really. And it's sitting on top of ebonized, in other words, blackened. It wasn't really ebony, but they made it look like that. But this is an American East Lake style with all these little towers and then the spoon carving here. This is going to be sometime around 1890, and it's only $60, which is pretty reasonable for that. It's empty. That's so sad. <clears throat> what a forlorn looking face. Ah, uh, yes. Wouldn't be Clarksville if there weren't piles of Afghans and chenille to be seen somewhere. Pedigos is closed today, but that store has a room full of Afghans that are practically falling on you. In fact, everything in that store is practically falling on you. There's a video from there way back in the recesses of my annals that you can watch. It's a funny place. Okay, this is one of the Japanese ones from the 1970s, but some of these fish planters are starting to be pretty collectible now. He's got a little damage on his tail, though. 
I think they must have had a branch in Nashville or something, because we're finding a lot of this metropolitan life insurance China around here, and it's got the metropolitan life insurance mark on the bottom, made by Meyer China. This would be about 1930. Five dollars is a fair price for that. Oh yes, it's a Care Bear. That's another thing we see in Clarksville for some reason quite a lot. Probably because there were military through here and your kids grew up fast enough that before you left they weren't interested anymore so you left the stuff behind. This is probably worth showing because people are starting to collect this now. This was very popular in the early 70s where you took the stainless steel and then you would do modernist designs usually with the stamp pattern of florals and some japanning or blackening in the background to make it set it out a little bit more. This is a company or a designer called Stanley Roberts. Uh, Burgantine is the pattern here. You can see on the bottom that it says Burgantine by Stanley Roberts there. Might be hard to see under that sticker, but this is something I'm seeing people starting to collect. They seem to have about the right prices for now. 15 on the relish, 15 on the tray, 20 for the cream and sugar. And I think that's an area of collecting that I'm seeing happening more now. This is a very typical and nice oak American piece from the 1890s, where you see this bow front on the top and the bottom drawer, but the rest is fairly plain. The interesting thing are the wing griffins that are holding it up on the sides here, which we'll see when we get around to the side. They have this priced at 700, which is pretty much about the going rate with these. But you can see the carving in here. This is applied. And then you've got the carving here as well. And people do really like those. They hold a lot of things, but they also have a nice mirror in it. And so it gives you the illusion of more space or more light in a room. And that's why they're popular even still. This is a very early Ellie Smith piece, the black amethyst with the heart and the two lovely women in it. It's a very common piece though. It's actually seen quite a bit. It's priced at 24. They were just so popular in the time that they made a lot of them. So as elegant as they are, they're not super valuable. This cute little gal from the early 60s is sitting there probably at her leisure and showing off her legs. Very strange little figure. She would have been part of a set. Oh, Miami Beach Federal. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's nice because it's a sorter and it is an area near where I sell, but these sorter banks are pretty plain and regular. This, on the other hand, is something I see in this area that they must have had a big distribution here and they don't really seem to sell for a lot here, but I've sold them for more outside the area. And I like these because they're handy for display at shows for paper items and things. So I think I'm gonna put this at the counter too. And then there's a really cool old typewriter here. This is the Oliver and you can see they had a little different idea about how they were going to arrange things so that when you typed, this comes down and hits the ribbon there. And so the ribbon goes flat across the platen. So it's a little different. I'm not gonna do it because they said not to play with it, but I did wanna show you that that is the way that it works. And those are from about 1900, 1910. And they typically do sell for about that 375 price. And then here's something that's worth showing. This is from Thailand. These brass and teak sets were very popular. They came back with a lot of GIs. It makes sense we'd see it in a military town. A lot of people who were stationed in Vietnam ended up uh, bringing these back as presents. They typically have the dancer on the top. They're neat looking. People thought they were fancy and cool and they left them in the box and they've hardly ever been used. And that's why it's priced only at $45 because there's a lot of these in perfect condition. But they're neat looking. Okay, let's see. Um, I kind of didn't look at everything in the center, so maybe I should take a look down the middle one time before I go to get help with the showcases. This is a whirly. These, this has been fixed up, but this is a gas stove from about 1910. These would have been taken out to camps. It was sort of like a Coleman stove. You hooked it up to a gas source of some sort and there were your burners. Priced at 115. 
This is Colorado pattern glass from about the 1890s. A lot of these were done as souvenirs in the time. It's priced at only $450, which is really very inexpensive. Uh, but it has ghost paint from Cincinnati Zoo, which is where it was sold originally. So, Yes, and here we go. Kentucky and Barkley Dams and Lakes. One was there since the 30s and the other came along later, and that's when this mug would have been done. This is land between the lakes, which is a place I sell, so that might be worth considering. And then as far as dinnerware that you will see more recently, because this is 1960s, 70s, 80s, this is Blue Danube, and this is the later of the two marks. So it looks a lot like Meissen's Blue Onion, but it was made in Japan. It is good quality, and there are people who are still filling out sets of these because when it went out of production about 20 years ago, a lot of people didn't have everything they needed yet. So that's why you've got the coffee pot at 45 and the egg cups at 10 each, and they should sell for those prices. Antique Harold Sardines counter display tin. $46.50. It's not in great shape. You could clean it up some with uh, Meguiar's or one of those, but it's an interesting thing because it was meant to be used to sell sardines on a counter. This is also a store display tin here with the clothes, but it's pretty worn out. That's from about 1890 though, with a nice little drawer. Old Bardstown Prime Sour Mash Bourbon. This would have been something that you would have bought at the liquor store in the 60s as a novelty. And this little thing actually, if you had the wooden stand, would probably open with a little bit of force, which I'm not going to give it. $14.50 on that. You will see these around. These were the tops of biscuit displays. In fact, actually, this one may be the whole thing. Usually you just see the glass door. But you'd put your fresh biscuits in every day. This is for Sunshine Biscuits, and Sunshine was a trademark of the Loose Wiles Biscuit Company. I just love that name. It sounds like they were up to something. $35 is actually a pretty good price on these. Let's see, what is this glamorous thing in here? The Something Veil hat. This looks very 1960s. The famous Glamour Veil hat, and I guess that's what it's supposed to look like, except this one's got polka dots. I'm going to take their word for it. That looks a little too brittle to try on. <laughs> Plus, I don't really need a veil hat today with my lovely hair. Now the fun part will be putting the ribbon back on in the appropriate way. There we go. Oh, one more showcase that I overlooked before. This is a little different version of the safe bank, the still bank that you see from about 1900 because it's got some design on the top. It, there's the detail on the top, which looks like an angel, and I have not seen that before. That's interesting. Something a little different in these. And you see the typical bottom of those. The screw would be in the top, and then you could unscrew it if you had to take it apart because you forgot the combination. This with the camel is going to be 1920s vintage, I would think, because that was when the tomb of King Tut was found, and there was a lot of interest for a little bit of time. It's got a Made in Japan mark, and that's about the time we're switching over to Made in Japan from Nippon. $18 is not a bad deal for that. It's a very specific look, but there are collectors for those. These are the original car seats. They probably don't stand up to modern requirements. $44.50. This one was made to be used on a bicycle, but they had a similar version that just hung over the back of the car. And they were used as late as about the 1950s before they started coming up with more strappy things. Because, of course, you know, you weren't belting yourself into a car back then, so why would you belt your kid into one? We all just bounced around happily. Well, these pendant lights are pretty cool. I like the shape. They're definitely late 60s. White is not the most exciting color, but you know, you put a colored bulb in them if you really want them to be snazzy. And they're only $60 for the pair, which is pretty good. I have to say I'm kind of tempted by that. 
I feel like these might sell at my mall space in Florida for double that. So maybe I need to get these. And I think with that, I'm going to go up and ask her to look at a couple of things. Because I don't think there's a whole lot that we've missed. Okay, so what we're looking for on this are a couple of things. First of all, does it have any evidence of wear? And it does look like it has been used some. It's just going to be on the edges here. And the next thing is, does it have any opal fire? And look at the edge there. It does fire opalescent, so this is actually an older one. It's not a 1960s or 70s reproduction. And then we look for condition. Now there's a little bit of roughness here, but that's pretty typical with these in the molds. I'm really looking with these, I'm pretty forgiving unless it's a big chunk missing, especially the keel you have to look at. Uh, you look at the guns, they're all there. The stacks are there. Let's make sure this part also fires opalescent, and it does. Oh yeah, you see it better in there, don't you? There, there we go. Yeah, so this is old. This is a good price. I'm gonna go ahead and get this. And then we'll find out what a good price it is when we do some research. Thanks for joining me again in the fun and fascinating antique community here where online meets the real world. Please click the subscribe button below, click the bell to be notified when new videos upload, leave a comment below, and hit thumbs up to like this video. Links to our online social media daily posts and our items for sale are in the description. This is George at The Antique Nomad. Bye for now!